Yeah, we are back. It's time for another episode of Dead, Dead to, to Us. We're back from the content factory. We're trying to log on to the stupid uh, computer, ready to party. As always, with me is my wonderful girlfriend, Shire Spence. Hey, baby, how are you? I'm good. What's going on with your computer? You're not logged in? No, we're logged in, and we're going in. I want right. to always give a shout-out to the Patreons. i got to give a shout-out to my friend Shauna, who said thank you for turning her on to 90 Day Fiance. Oh. She binge-watched all of them. Holy cow. It's and so good. I know. And she would like to suggest... Uh, married at first sight to uh, us. yes amanda also suggested that one i've heard it's great so we i want to give shauna a shout out thanks for the nice message shout out to my boy justin mick what does he send me today you need to read his shit man oh well, he's worried about brother bill brother bill's alive and well but we'll get to that on craigslist chaos tomorrow but we're back shout out to all the patreons shout out to everybody listening tell your friends we're up to 37 patreons which is awesome and it's great. Uh, we love you guys. It's and like 307 just without the O. That's right. Well, kind of. Shout out to my <laughs> man. My man Cameron, he just said, fuck it. I'm doing $20 a month. Oh, <laughs> so Cameron. Cam, shout out, Cam. You're welcome at the house anytime. <laughs> Come over, spend the night. We got a sleeping bag. You can sleep with Teddy. <laughs> He'll bark at you. Uh, but we just want to thank you guys. Thank you, everybody that bought the shirt. And um, we're still working on the live. Ed- the live uh, the live podcast, April 8th, Downtown Comedy Works. We're doing a live 31. If you know somebody cool, reach out. Tone Gordon is just firing off shit to any celebrity that's ever been in Denver. Shout out to Tone, as always, for trying to make this shit happen. But we're going to get you guys, hopefully, a big guest. We got Dan Soder in town this week. And try to get a Dan Soder 31 for you guys. And uh, that's that. So here we go on this week's episode. What do I need? Some sound effects? I know you missed those, babe. What do you want? A little sound effects? Here we go. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Mm -hmm. I got to get a new sound effect. Um, (laughs) I got the new one that I'm going to do from the bowling guy. Remember? Yeah, do you have it? What is it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to save it for next week. Because I got to get it on here. I'm going to do it after the pod. But we got some new sound effects coming. I'm sure you guys are tired of these ones. (laughs) Do you want me to do it? (laughs) What? Do you remember what he says? Yeah. All right, do it. Who do you think you are? I am. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it's Pete Weber, the famous bowling one. I'm going to get it on the soundboard, and I'm going to really blast some people with that. But it is good to be back. I was on the road. We both had interesting weekends. We did. You did. (laughs) You did. What did I do? Oh, I did have an interesting weekend. (laughs) Who should we start with, yours or mine? (laughs) Yours. So my weekend was good. I went back home to Cheyenne to see my crew, watch uh, watch my alma mater, the Cheyenne Central Indians, beat our crosstown rivals, Cheyenne East, in a packed gym, which is nothing cooler for me, not you, Shire. You probably could care less about high school basketball. Yeah. Did you see me glaze over when you started saying yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> she was trying to keep her awake. But I went home. We drank way too much. We partied way too long. Uh, got to hang with Pedersen, watch, watch his son Brock win the city championship, which was awesome. He played like Rodman. He's in eighth grade. And he he went full fake sleeve tattoo. I saw that. And it looked dope. And, you know, I could hear parents in the crowd just like, oh, he's in eighth grade. Why is he all chatted up? And <laughs> fucking nerds. But he uh, he played great, so we had a good time. I got to hang with the Pedersen crew. Was it like a shirt? What was it? No, it was a full tattoo like you like you on his skin. Just like you would buy a pet oh, set. He really? bought like a thousand of them. And he, they just like tatted him Yeah, up? just like watered it. But oh, that's so And he funny. had one on the back of his neck and he was full <laughs> Rodman. And he was yeah. talking shit to the other. They, they, they almost got a fight. The two teams almost got in a fight. Oh, man. It was another crosstown rival. But then Ped, uh, <laughs> Brock was talking shit to this kid. They had got into it early in the season and he hit him with the old... Uh, I like your shoes. I remember when I gave them to Goodwill a month ago. <laughs> Sick burn for an eighth grader. Take that. <laughs> Make the kid cry. So that was cool. I got to see uh, a good friend, Andy Panel, was in the building, which was a special surprise. So we had a good Cheyenne trip. Then I had a show in Lincoln on Sunday. So I didn't really party too hard on Saturday. Thank God. Because my cousin Trent did. So we left my car at the bar. I went to get my car at 12 30 in the afternoon 
my cousin drank and I went back and forth to this bar and checked on him a couple times. Came home at twelve thirty at night. Oh my god, twelve hours full on strong at the four winds. Just he gets drunk and he goes into bobblehead mode where he's just so drunk and his head's just blah wobble wobble wobble. How much is a tab for twelve hours? In Wyoming, it's like twelve dollars probably. I don't know. That's the good spot. But I you know, I I think he was playing pool for beers and shit. Because mm-hmm. I asked him, he goes, Well, he did that awful thing. He goes, Well, I don't think I paid my tab, so we'll see how bad this is. I was like, How many drinks do you have? He's like, well, I had like six maybe. I was like, No. Yeah. You had one drink every two hours. That's what I said. You wouldn't be this drunk. So anyway, shout out to everybody in Cheyenne. It was good to see everybody. Then the next morning, I took off for Lincoln, Nebraska. I was running a little behind it schedule anyway, which is comics. I always tell you, go early, go early, all the nerd shit. And I found out why, because I got pulled over <laughs> in Nebraska flying. I'm going like 95 in the middle of nowhere. And this cop goes by on the other side of the road. We make eye contact, but he keeps going and I keep going. So I'm like, fuck it, let's roll. And then maybe 10 minutes later, I just see in this in my rear view this cop flying. And I knew it was me. I was like, here we go. And, of course, he pulls me over. And it's a young-ass dude, but usually I can get out of You know, usually saying you're a comic gets you out of shit. But I'm in a rental car from fucking this ghetto-ass rental place here. And my car reeks of marijuana smell Mm -hmm. so he rolls down i roll down the window and he goes he starts asking me said i clocked you going 92 blah 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 i was like all right i go yeah i was i was just you know i was listening to something i wasn't really paying attention this car it's not my car it gets up and goes and and i can't even put the bullshit on him and then he's like smells like weed in here do you mind getting out and i was like yeah i get i mean yeah so I get out and he takes me back to his car. Then he puts me, pats me all down, <laughs> rubs my junk and everything and give a good dick rub in there. And uh, then he puts me in the front seat of his car. So I just have to sit there. He puts you in the front? Yeah. So I'm just sitting there, right? You and could have stolen his car so oh, easy. Oh, just wait. Uh, trust me. I almost, I was like, this is what's sick about me is like, do it for the pod. No. Do it for the pod. You wouldn't pod. have a pod. So he starts asking me questions, you know, what are you doing? Because I have Georgia plates on this car and it smells like marijuana. So he's like, I could tell he's like, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm a comedian going to a show. He's like, oh, really? A comedian, huh? I was like, yeah. How long have you been doing it? And I would tell him. I was like, he's, then he just kind of insults me. He's like, you ever done like a big show or anything? I was like, uh, yeah, I've been on TV. Sorry about <laughs> it. I actually have a book in the car, you know, that's getting turned into a movie. So I was like, you, you know how to read? And he goes, yeah, I <laughs> so read. So then you insulted him back. Yeah, Do fuck you know you. how to read? And then he was like, uh, he was like, I go, you know what? You could, I'll just give you one of my books if you're going to read it. And he's like, oh, no, I can't do that. I was like, well, I don't care. It's fine. He goes, no, I can't take stuff from people. As like a gift, and then I was like, oh shit, this is the worst bribe ever. <laughs> I'm trying to bribe a cop with my shitty ass book. And well, my amazing ass book, but it has this value you of You like, weren't trying to bribe him. I was trying to be nice, but then I realized he's like, I can't take stuff. So then um, he goes, well, do you mind if I search your car for weed? I go, yeah, I don't care. I've never smoked weed in my life. I've never done a drug. You can look whatever you want. He's like, okay. And then I thought he would just like glance. He gets out takes his hat off and attaches it to his side which is weird that he has like a side clip (laughs) and then he fucking pulls out some gloves and i was like oh shit this dude is gonna go for some shit so well yeah because you're not gonna keep your weed out just like in the cup holder so now i'm like i'm still i know i don't have any weed but i'm like he starts going through my car like every fucking looking under the seats and, and i'm still just sitting in his car right and then, like, I had, because we've talked about my low testosterone on here, so in my, I had just bought some testosterone pills, and I just had them in the console, like, the center console. So I was like, he's going to see that and wonder what that is. And then, so he's going through my back. I have a box full of books that I was going to sell at my show. He's going through the box, like, taking out the books, looking real close. And I'm still just sitting there in his cop car. So I start looking around, and then his fucking phone's just sitting on his seat right next to me. And then in the door is his wallet. What? And I'm like, how gangster would it be if I just fucking took the money out of his wallet to pay for this <laughs> ticket? I could tell this story. So now he starts going. He undoes the trunk. He 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 takes out my bag. He he starts digging in like the tire well of the fucking trunk. Mm-hmm. So I'm still like, like I said, if those of you guys that know me, I've never done a drug in my life. I've never even, I don't know if I've ever even held a drug in my hand. 
But then I'm also, as he's searching, I'm like, oh, motherfucker, if whoever had this car just left some weed somewhere, I'm dead. No one's ever going to believe this. Mm-hmm. Well, they could, I mean, you you would get a lawyer and they would drug test you. And Yeah, but still, that wouldn't prove that it wasn't, I didn't have weed. I was transporting it or moving it Well, or yeah, but you would probably get off on a lesser charge. Well, I still don't need it. And I'm still, I'm supposed to go to a show. This takes like 40. Oh, content, content, content. <laughs> yeah. So this takes like 45 minutes. I'm sitting in this guy's cop car just looking at all the shit. I mean, the guns in there and shit. Like, I, I was like, I could do whatever. I could have. He, I wasn't handcuffed or anything. I could have just jumped over into the driver's seat or done whatever. What a stupid cop. I know. It's I, a good thing you asked him if he could read. Because who <laughs> puts somebody in their front seat with access to all that stuff? What was his name? You should put him on blast right now. He'll probably get fired. It's on the ticket. But anyway, so he... So at this point, I'm still like, maybe he'll let me off. I don't know. And then he comes back after forever. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to be late for my show. So he comes back and then he's like, yeah, I'm gonna give you a ticket. I didn't find any weed. Well, I was worried I had Viagra in there. Mm-hmm. In my bag, in my like toiletry bag, I have a bunch of Viagra. But it's been given to me from another comic. So it's still in his pill bottle. So I'm like, I know you're not supposed to have a pill bottle with someone else's name on it and then shit in there. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to get in trouble for Viagra. And- so for my friend listeners who are listening to you right now, why are you taking Viagra on the road with you? Well, I don't take it on the road. It just stays in my toiletry bag. Mm. What do you know? What What are you talking about? Why are you trying to cause drama? I'm not trying to cause drama. I just know that I'm going to get questioned about that. So. How dare you? Uh I I don't know. I keep I keep, where do you what do you think? I just move Viagra around a lot. Mm. It just stays in my stays in your toiletry bag. Dab kit. Yeah, whatever the fuck it's called. All right. Well, so anyway, you think you're gonna be late? He comes back. He doesn't find any weed. Like, no God. <laughs> no. No weed. And then I'm like, so then, so on the dashboard, there's like a, uh, like the radar gun. And it says 91, right? So he gets back in. He has to print all the shit on a computer. <clears throat> and then it prints out a long ass. It takes fucking forever. Like an old school printer. Like, like one line at a time. So I just have to sit there while this fucking thing prints. I'm not lying. For maybe two minutes. Two huge ass pieces of paper. And he's like, yeah, so I got to give you a ticket. You know, I got you going 92. And then I was like... So then he gives me a ticket, and then I that I was nice to him the whole time. And I was like, "What? It says ninety one right there." I go, "I know it doesn't matter. I'm still, but why the fuck? Why'd you put ninety two? Like, why wouldn't you just put ninety one? He's like, "Well, when I saw you speed, it was beeping ninety two, but then when I hit it, it was like ninety one." I was like, "Well, well, what? Just put ninety one. It says ninety one. I'm sitting here looking at ninety one." So then, um, I got out and got mad and fucking drove off, and I'm never going to. And I'm just threw the shit in the trash. Because I don't think I'm going to get like a warrant in Kimball, Nebraska. All right. So you're going to pay your <laughs> ticket in Nebraska and then we no. don't have to worry about it. The only thing I might do is set up a show in this shitty little town of Kimball, Nebraska. You can't run for mayor if you're not, not paying your ticket. I'm not running for mayor. And, yeah, but one day in your life. And the you mayor might of want Wyoming to. didn't pay her taxes and she did all right. That's like $200,000. So I got a $200 ticket driving to do a $300 gig, which is uh, not <laughs> the ideal. <laughs> business move you know it's just oh no, god <laughs> i was just driving going what <laughs> what an idiot that's what i felt like a true idiot so um then i drove the rest of the way another five and a half hours to lincoln where my buddy Brad Stewart set up a show at the legendary Zoo Bar, this famous ass old bar, just a real magical place. You could feel it right when you walk in. And then I did a show in Lincoln and uh, drank all the White Claw I could. And did they have White Claw? Yeah. Oh, that's good. But they didn't tell me they had it at first, so I had a couple Trulies and then some White Claws. But we got a good turnout. This, I get to the bar and there's no worse feeling than walking in and there's just four people in there. Shout out to my buddy Brandon, who sent his girlfriend's parents to come see me, which is so ballsy, which I think they had fun. But I'm like, I don't know if I would send, you know, your parents to go watch a comic I know might be pretty dirty. So, but they were really sweet, took pictures. And then my buddy Dan and his buddies from Cheyenne came and um, he was a punter at Nebraska. So he told me great punter stories. And then uh, we went home and I slept in. 
my buddy Brad's girlfriend's son's bed. I thought you had a hotel. No. Oh. I slept in uh, my buddy's house, his son's room, and a little little twin bed hmm. with huge flathead sports stars on the walls. Hmm. And then he made breakfast in the morning, and I drove my ass seven hours back. Flying again, like, give me another ticket. Can't. <laughs> but we made it. You and that it. was my weekend. So uh, shout out again to everybody in Lincoln for coming out. Thank you, Brad, for setting it up. It's a beautiful room. Fuck you, Nebraska State Trooper. You could have let me slide, man. Like, come on. You know? He should have let you slide for how much risk he put himself in. I think he thought it was a big score. The fact it was a rented car with Georgia plates. I'm heading back towards Georgia. Mm. The car smells like weed. I think. Yeah, but if that's the case, he should have put you in. He should have. If he's going to put you in the car, he needs to put you in the back. Why would he wow. put you in the front? I have so many problems with this. What are your problems that I could have... You could have shot him in the head. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think his shotgun... I don't know. I think it's like... I don't know. Maybe I could have pulled it out. I could have stole his wallet and phone. Which You could have stole his wallet and phone. You could have gone onto his computer screen and looked up confidential information about other... That's true. ...people. Well, I didn't. I just sat there like a yeah. little bitch. Well, now you have good karma. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but we did it. So I almost went to jail for in Nebraska for the rest of my life, which would have been no more podcast. But <laughs> I love you guys too much to let you down. I know you guys need more Craigslist chaos. You got to hear from Shire. So I made it back here. You made it back. I think that's it. I don't know if anything else really crazy happened. So mm. no. no, you called me walking through a cemetery. Oh, I did do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. We were, we went, we got drunk before we went to the high school game. <laughs> like some true idiots. Like some true high schoolers. Yeah, like some true <laughs> seniors in high school sneaking through a cemetery drinking, uh, drinking Moscow meals going to a high school game. So we did it. And I missed you and Teddy, but it sounded like you had fun. How did your weekend go? My weekend was great. I, after work, went to go have a drink with Chancellor. 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 And then... How dare you? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like a Chancellor sound effect. So I went to have drinks with him, and drinks with him turned into us riding the same scooter together from bar to bar and then going to a gay club and it was like cowboy night i think yeehaw maybe or maybe they always do that and then there was like a drag show so there were all these like cowboys with their shirts off and like then assless chaps yeah and really then, no that's what the bartenders wear there isn't it yeah, but then like other, then there were there was also like, um, country two stepping and line dancing and things happening. Can you do that? Do yeah. you know how to line dance? Yeah, I mean line dancing. There's like so many different line dances, so I know some, mm -hmm. but I don't know all of them. But I can country two step, but nobody else that I was with knew how to country two step. The gays don't two step. They well, yeah. Chancellor does not know how oh. to. And then, uh, how many then, hot was there? Any hot girls in there? Um, I didn't really see any, but also that's not a place that you want to scope for hot girls because you don't know if they're girls. <laughs> True. <laughs> anyway, I learned a lot about dressing in drag though because one of these girls, she was just going for it on the dance floor, and at the at one point she she had on this like sparkly bra thing. And at one point, she, like, dove on the floor and, like, to slide across the floor. And I was like, oh, my God, her boobs are going to come out. And then I looked at Chancellor, and I was like, wait, how does she have boobs? And he was like, oh, it's a breastplate. And I was like, what's a breastplate? So then he pulls it up on Amazon and shows it to me. And it's like, it's like a like a Rubber silicone titty? yeah thing that you put on, and it goes all the way up to your neck. Which is why most drag queens have like a collar on or like a choker oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. And because it hides like the seam. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it it's like a tank top basically with just huge jiggly boobs. Yeah, that go wow. inside. Yeah. Anyway, so I learned a Could lot about that. Could a real girl pull that off? Yeah. 
bro. I guess then the dude would be pissed though when he got home. Yeah, I mean, Can yeah. You, yeah. I think you would just, you should just get implants probably yeah. if you're planning on wearing a, a, a boob plate or whatever you call it. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we we danced the night away. What's we, a what's a what's a gay club dance floor like? Oh, well, <laughs> let me tell you. Glad you asked is what you're supposed to say. Right? Glad you asked. <laughs> um, it is not. Well, it's weird because it's like you. I don't know. I feel like there's no politically correct way no, to say this. Just say it. So <laughs> normally. When I'm like walking through a dance floor, people will generally like stop or stand back or get out of the way for me or like look at me like, oh, and usually I have people approaching me. And that's the opposite of what happened to me at this (laughs) club. So that was a different experience for me as I was working my way through the dance floor with chancellor i was getting a lot of dirty looks like how how dare you be on this dance floor (laughs) yeah um and chancellor was getting a lot of people coming up to him and wanting to dance with him so in a weird way i felt very like safe like oh yeah Mm -hmm. nobody's gonna mess with me and i could do whatever i want but then on the other hand i was like i mean Okay, I'm not like I. I don't know. I just you're not the bell of the ball. Yeah, I was like, I'm not that special. That's kind of a bummer. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then it's really smelly because there's so many guys just like sweating, sweating and dancing. And stink, right? Yeah. So what is? Do they dance like? Oh, it was like Britney, Backstreet Boys. But Lady then they're Gaga. just like doing like these are bad stereotype things. But are they like doing? Are they just like grinding on each other? Or they're doing like choreographed shit like Britney did in the video? Or yeah, like, kind of both. And everybody what, kind of whatever. Just having fun. Yeah, and then there's a lot of like costumey things going on. So like somebody had these sunglasses on that looked like Star Trek kind of. They went like mm-hmm. all the way across their eyes, and they were like rainbow colored. A lot of people don't really wear that many clothes. Mm-hmm. Um. And then there was also like a lot of drunk girls that were all over each other. Like lesbians? Yeah. On the dance floor, which was like, like, you know how when like, I feel like when girls get sloppy drunk, they can't control themselves. And when guys get sloppy drunk, they like, it's like testosterone boost and they go crazy. Uh So like a, a sloppily drunk girl girl on a dance floor is not really a good look like it's just like this girl like kind of slumping over and then her girlfriend's like trying to like dance with her and fondle her it's very bizarre um did you see any dicks well i didn't see any flesh or any nudity i did not no i didn't see any flesh but like all of the hired dancers Mm mm-hmm were wearing like jock straps oh that's it yeah and they were just muscular and hot yeah but then they were also wearing like see-through stripper heels really yeah what uh and they were doing like pull-ups on like the water pipes that run to the bar (laughs) really Mm -hmm. and then like there's like this one area that's just like a like a glass like cube that they're in and then there's like holes in different areas of the cube where you can like put money through to them and then sometimes there was this they would like switch out who goes into the cube so like this one guy was in there and he was just like twerking like they just like do handstands in there and like prop their feet up on the wall and just like twerk it out but then there was this one guy in there and nobody was really giving him any love and so he put his hands out of the little (laughs) hole. Uh, so that was kind of funny was like where's <clears throat> where's chancellor rank and rank was he like one of the hottest gay dudes in there or? yeah so yeah would people... chancellor's very beautiful yeah. like chancellor's very beautiful style wise he was super cash that night and he <laughs> felt really insecure about it we were on the scooter on the way there and he's like oh i should have put on more necklaces <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but um, yeah. Other and he also was wearing way more clothes than anybody that was in there. Oh, really? But if he hadn't been, he he. I mean, I think he was one of the more beautiful people in there. If he hadn't been wearing as many clothes, he for sure would have been like top ranking. But do dudes come up and like hit on him? Are yeah. They, are mm-hmm. they, was it aggressive? Yeah. And then what does he say? He just says, I have a boyfriend? He just like, mm, and just like smiles and just like <laughs> makes eyes at him and then doesn't really say much and they walk away. But when we were in there, um, he looks at me and he goes, Shire, oh my God, I dated that guy. And there was this one guy walking around in a sweatsuit, but it was like shorts and a sweatshirt and they were like bubblegum pink. And I was like, what? Like, you dated that guy? Who is he? And how did I never hear about him? (laughs) And he goes, um, he goes, yeah, I stopped dating him because I just, like, wasn't really feeling it. And then when I broke up with him, he said, who breaks up with me? I drive a Lotus. (laughs) Oh, God. And then we were talking to, so we ran into other hairstylists that were there that Mm -hmm. Chancellor knew. and, And I knew some of them, whatever. So we were all kind of mingling and talking together and Chancellor and one of the guys started talking about this pink jumpsuit guy and Chancellor told him the story of how do you, you know, how do you break up with me? I drive a Lotus and the guy looks at him and he goes, yeah, but like, hasn't he driven that Lotus for a while? Like trade it in maybe. (laughs) (laughs) So I love it. Yeah, that was pretty funny. So it's probably, it's fun, right? I've been to a couple gay bars and it's it's one of our not first dates, but maybe yeah, pretty early on we went to the same one that to Charlie's. Give him a shout out, yeah, Charlie's. Charlie's, yeah. I'll say if you guys haven't done it, do it. I mean, for me, I know growing up in Wyoming, I was very homophobic and not like mean, but you just we just didn't have a I did, didn't have any gay friends, so I moved to Vegas and L.A. and well, it's not like here's the thing. I feel like people are like, well, what are they going to do? They're going to hit on me? Okay, so then you're just like, oh, sorry, yeah, not into it. But, like, they're and they're not probably gonna rape you. they're probably not going to hit on most of you anyway, so don't worry about well, it. Well, right, yeah. That's but if true. you go, it's it's just a fun it's a fun time with cheap drinks and that so the, cheap. Every time I've been, everyone's super nice and no one hit on me. No one, I didn't go to the bathroom and nothing bad happened. So here's what's funny about the cheap drinks. Chancellor and I went on and off buying each other a round of drinks. Um, and whenever he bought us a round of drinks, it was $9. And whenever I bought us a round of drinks, it was $13. Oh, take that. <laughs> yeah. You see what we deal with in our I lives know, every day. I know. It's not that fun. One of my favorite jokes, I don't know if I've ever said it on here. It's not even a joke that has ever worked. But I went to, uh, of all the places, I went to a gay bar in Salt Lake City. Oh. And, uh, and I went. Mormons? And I, Huh? Mormons? I don't. They don't. They didn't say. <laughs> they, they just said it was just. I don't know. If there's gay. No, I don't think there's allowed to be gay. I Mormon. I mean, I'm sure. That, oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> Shire's on <laughs> fire. But I'll never forget. I went in true Brant fashion. I had to take a shit, like only I do. And I went to the bathroom, and there was a plunger sitting next to the toilet. And the joke I wrote is like, "That is the hardest working plunger in America." Because it probably gets used at both ends. In this oh one. my god! I know. I don't know if it'll ever work on stage, but that's why I was sitting there thinking, like, this poor plunger has probably been through it all, both both ends of it. Wow, that's not fun to think about. Yeah. So uh, I will tell you the bathroom. Well, the interesting thing about the bathrooms at the gay bar too is that. Chancellor and I, when we were going to the bathroom, he was like, just come with me. And I like go and I step in there and there's like a bunch of guys at like the trough. And then there's two stalls and there's a guy in there. And I look at Chancellor like, why am I in here? I'm going to go to the women's restroom. So I go to the women's restroom. And of course, I wait in a line of like 15 people. But every single person in there was the nicest. Oh, really? Like, oh, my God, you look so cute. Oh, my God, I love your shirt. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) And, oh, your hair, whatever. And, oh, well, it's a long line. You can just come in the stall with me. And, I mean, it was, like, the craziest thing ever. So I go out of the bathroom, and Chancellor's standing there waiting for me. And he's like, they're non-binary. You could have come in with me. Nobody would have said anything to you. And I'm like, yeah, because they can't say anything to you. But also, no thanks. (laughs) I'm good. I'll just go in my side. 
Well, sounds like a good Saturday. What was it? Friday night? Saturday night on that the street? That was streets? my Saturday night. And then my Sunday morning, I went to Gay Brunch. Oh, where was that? Well, it was not. <laughs> it was not a, at a gay place. It, oh, was, you just it went... was the company that I was with. Oh. But that was fun, too. Fun and fabulous. Well, I'm glad that... Uh... <laughs> It's one of you like you made the Viagra joke. It's like I leave town, you just hang out with dudes all the whole time. <laughs> I mean, and they're way better looking than me and better fashion and have more money. That's why I should set it up like that. Yeah. What Shire do when you're on the road? She goes out with these rich, hot dudes with way better fashion and dances the night away and buys them drinks. Don't and... worry, we're all bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me. I guess I would, I don't know what I would be. No, what you take, I would be a top probably right technically i don't know if you were gay would you want to take it or would you want to give it give it for sure that's then a- you would be a top <laughs> i think you can ask that to every straight dude because <laughs> if you were if your answer is take it then you would just be gay <laughs> like, well no that's not true because there's a bunch of gay guys that are tops yeah but well i don't know or, <laughs> or here's some pop culture. I don't know if that's pop culture, but here's some t- uh, terminology for you. Okay. If you're both, if you like taking it and giving it, you're called a verse. Oh, like you're well versed. Yeah. Hmm, they could have done better. <laughs> Top, bottom, uh, bot up. You just say like, "I'm a verse." Oh yeah, I'm a verse. <laughs> well, anyway, we yeah. learned a lot. Yep, that was my weekend. <clears throat> Usually we're learning about sports. We learned a lot about <laughs> uh, the gay bars, and, you know, there's no football right now. So, well, I'm glad you had fun. Shout out to Chancellor. Shout out to Alex. Thanks for taking Shire out and, and having fun with her while I'm in Nebraska drinking mm-hmm. White Claws, talking Husker football, trying to think about taking a chew for the first time in my life. But no. All right, which, what are we moving on to? On to the next thing? Do you want to just go straight into Chancellor's Quote of the Week really quick? Yeah, can you give us the Chancellor Quote of the Week? I already like the one, the Lotus one, by the way, but go ahead. I guess that's not his quote. No, it's not his quote. Um, So I had a Dyson blow dryer. <laughs> Chancellor also has a Dyson blow dryer. Both of our Dysons. We, we both have had them for a little over a year. He's had to replace his three times. I've had to replace mine four times. They're awful blow dryers. Do not buy one. They're expensive and not worth it. Yeah. So. Dyson. I, Dyson. Not great. They've got major filter problems. Anyway. So I bought a new blow dryer. And it's the same one that Alex has. But I Alex has a bright orange, like highlighter orange color. I just got plain black. And Alex was trying to tell Chancellor that he should get rid of his Dyson and he should get one of these blow dryers too. And Alex said, there's a gold blow dryer with your name on it. And Chancellor said, "Mm -mm, no, I don't think so. Do I look like a gold person? Don't let my Gucci belt confuse you. (laughs) (laughs) But he wears gold all the time. He wears gold all the time. But he was wearing a Gucci belt that day and it was a gold belt buckle. And so, <laughs> and that's our chancellor. And that's our chancellor. Well, thank you, chancellor, for another great chancellor gold Gucci quote of the week. Moving on to our next, what do you want to do now? Shire learn sports. Yeah, let's. It learn is time some for everybody's favorite. Shire oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. learns sports. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Shire learns sports. We haven't done this one in a while. Um, for some reason, whenever I'm watching the Duke game, you call me up and go, Hey, are you watching the Duke game? They're winning. I don't know how this happens. So that's the first question. How are you always watching the Duke game when you're out with your gay friends and you never watch sports with me at home? Maybe I just know about Duke. Okay. Well, that's a good answer. Or maybe it's just a coincidence that happened twice, but it is time. Also, I was not with my gay friends yesterday. I was with Emily. Shout out to Emily. Although a lot of times people do think that we're together. (laughs) And so we used to always call ourselves lesbian sisters. Which is gross. (laughs) Either be sisters or be lesbian. Don't be lesbian sisters. That is one porn that we'll all skip over. Well, maybe not, but who knows? Okay. (laughs) Shire learned sports. We're going to just give you a couple quick questions. Um, questions Tom Brady. 
Yep. Free agent. Patriots. Where do you think he's going to play football next year? Oh. He can go to any team. Where do you think he will? Will he return to the Patriots or will he go to a certain team that you're going to tell us? I think he's going to stay where he's at. Okay, can you say it into the microphone with some conviction? I think he's going to stay where he's at. Okay, you heard it here first. Tom Brady will be staying with the Patriots. Question. Why would he leave? Well, there's a lot more to it that no one wants to talk about on here. But he he might just go, you know, he wants to see what he can do somewhere else. The same way the person would leave their job to another salon, let's say hypothetically, and see if you get treated better or more respected or stuff like that. Do you think he's not well respected and not getting treated well where he's at? Well, I think he just wants more weapons. And I think everyone always said, I mean, he's the best ever, but a lot of it credit also goes to his coach. So it would be really big if he went somewhere else and won. It'd be like a big fuck you to everybody. Like you guys already know I'm the best, but now I'm really the best. So we'll see. I bet. I think I'm with you. I think he'll stay in new England, but I kind of hope he does. Cause we all like to, Hate against hate against New England. What if he went to the Broncos? How would you feel about that? I would love it. It's kind of what Peyton Manning did, but I don't think there's any shot. Mm. We're good with Drew. So uh, let's all root against the Patriots, except for my boy Lee. <laughs> Shout out to Lee Espinosa. Um, I hate the Patriots, but that's another story for another day. Does Lee like the Patriots? He loves the Patriots. Then you should probably also shout out Amanda, right? Oh, yeah, Amanda Lucero, too. Mm -hmm. But the, the Patriots fans are so annoying. Mm -hmm. All my family are Patriots fans. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, because oh. my grandpa's from Massachusetts. Yeah, but they grew up in Florida. No, he grew up in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. And well. then my uncles are both Patriots fans, which makes my mom a Patriots fan, except my mom has always wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, so <laughs> she also loves the Cowboys. So if we're ever around your family, they're going to be rooting for the Patriots. A hundred percent. But that's why we don't spend time with my no, family. No, God! <laughs> no, God, please! Um, okay, question number two. NBA championship is coming up. Who is Shire's pick to win the NCAA I mean, the NBA championship. What's my option? Who do you think is going to win out of all the NBA teams? Out of everyone? Yeah. Only one can win. <laughs> Who do you think it'll be? Well, can you give me a little bit more information? Uh, do you does do people normally pick their team with knowing nothing? <laughs> no. Okay. So that's so why we want to know what... What you would pick. I mean, what team do you think? Well, who's left? Everybody. Well, what am I supposed to do with that information? Well, one team, you're supposed to just pick a team. Who's the top four right now? Well, I'm not telling you that. Why? Okay, it's the Lakers, the Clippers, Milwaukee Bucks, and we'll throw in the Nuggets. Who is Shires? The Nuggets are not in. The, they are. They could be the two seed. Or you can have the Celtics. Who out of those are your pick to win the NBA Finals? Mm, I'm going to go with... Do the Lakers win every time? No. Nobody wins every time. Mm. I think You I could also pick... have the Rockets. Who's that? Houston. No, I don't like them. Okay. Houston, we have a problem. Shire doesn't like <laughs> you. <laughs> Who is your pick? Uh, I think maybe my pick... You know, wait, what about that Canada team? Toronto? Yeah. You can pick them. The Raptors? Are they doing good or no? I mean, they're, they're, they have a chance. Were they in the finals last year? They won last year. Yeah, we don't want to pick them this year. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe between the Clippers and the Celtics. My gut's wanting to say the Clippers, though. So Shire's NBA Finals prediction is Clippers to beat the Celtics. In how many games? Four, can they? Do they even play each other? They can. Four, five, six, or seven. Well, I don't know. Well, that's why you have to pick. Well, what's normal? There's no normal. Just pick. Uh, six. She is picking. Wait, no, that's not possible. Yes, it is. How? It's, oh, best, it's best of first one to four wins. Right. So then it would be four. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Shire oh, yeah, learning sports. <laughs> Shire's there learning math. Is Shire's pick. Well, we'll check back in in June when the finals ends. But she has the Los Angeles Clippers beating the Boston Celtics in six games. Before that, we have March Madness coming up. March Madness, the NCAA basketball championship. Who 
is Shire's pick of all the college teams to win the 2020 NCAA championship. Duke. Duke. <laughs> she goes with, I knew that going into this. And so she How'd is, you know? Because you don't know any other colleges. Yes, I do. Okay, who is Duke beating in the finals then? Uh, UConn. Duke versus UConn. <laughs> we'll see if it happens. I don't think UConn will make the tournament, but we like it. And that is enough of Shire. <laughs> knows nothing about Shire is slowly learning sports. Mm. On to the next thing, which is what do you have next for us, babe? Oh, what do I have next? Probably what you watching. What you watching? What you what you what you watching? Watching. I got to make that <laughs> A new soundbite. Next week, we're going to have a new soundbite for you. Whatcha, whatcha, whatcha watching? Watching. <laughs> <We get, laughs> it's one of our songs on the album. It's yes. Fine. Oh, that, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. We need some. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Let's what? get through what you're watching real quick because we haven't really been watching much because we've been separate. Well, we have 90 Day Fiance. We have the Love is Blind finale. Yeah. We have the 60 Days In finale. Did we talk about Love is Blind finale? No. Oh, so Love is Blind. Finale. Finale is great. And you guys can still binge watch this, so we're not going to give away a lot of it. But here's what you should know before you watch it. It's not like The Bachelor where everything is hunky-dory in the end. Some of the couples say no at the altar. It's awesome. They get to the altar. They do a bunch of bullshit. And then they go, are you going to do this or what? And their families are there, friends. And when it goes wrong, it goes so awesomely wrong. Mm -hmm. So I recommend that. We don't want to give it away. But the finale, I was—I thought we were going to be disappointed. It lived up to the hype. Yeah. And it's uh, there, was, there was more disasters than love, which was, you know, we're all rooting for train wrecks. No one wants But also that, I mean, that's what's practical, too like when you're watching a show like that to have six people come out of that show happily married not possible well but it's tv they could make anything i mean most tv is scripted fake anyway so that's why it was great that they didn't so we watched that the new 90 days the other way or what are we watching right now before the 90 days we are watching before the 90 days. so it's great as always these americans are explaining to their families that they love foreigners and have been sending them money and are flying over to meet them so Mm -hmm. it's complete the one guy flew over i think he fell asleep for this last night but he flew over and he met the russian girl and it could not have been more awkward. Like, they don't even know how to talk to each other. It was just. At least she speaks English, though, right? Yeah. And it but wasn't even. She for sure has a lazy eye, right? Yeah. The laziest. It's that... not the laziest. It's like such a hint of lazy that you can't really tell if it's a lazy eye or not. It's just like. It's just like it's her eyes. It's even more look... annoying because it's like, I th- you're like, oh, it's lazy. But then you're like, oh, no, it's back to working. And then you're like, oh, no, this shit's lazy. <laughs> like her... Her just takes eyes a lot of just breaks. look like they're extra far apart. Like they're just looking away from each other some of the time. Yeah. And they didn't get along. It wasn't because of uh, the language. It was just because the dude's a fucking weirdo. Mm. We think he's gay even though he has a bunch of kids. And he just had a kid that died that he named Chasm. Mm-hmm. That Shire just said. <laughs> that God just did him a favor and just took him out early so he didn't have to be Chasm his whole life. Um, Shire can be mean sometimes. <laughs> um, you guys would never know that. So we got a big sixty days in finale. We got that's about it though. We're gonna watch the new show that Shauna uh, and Amanda recommended. I think Emily also recommended it to us. Well, then we got a lot it. of recommendations. I've heard that it goes a little slow paced though, and that Love Is Blind is kind of a spin off off of that. All right. Well, that's your homework, guys. Pick up 90 Day Fiance. Pick up. uh, Love is Blind is so easy to binge, and it's so awful, but it's a quick one, and it's just worth it. Yeah. uh, It is awful, though, but it's a good awful. Yeah. Like I said, train wreck all day. At the salon, I had a client the other day that was like, oh, my God, my friend was just telling me about Love is Blind. She loves that show. And the salon was pretty quiet. It was just Sierra Chancellor and I working. And I go, wait, like she 
she loves it and she was like yeah she loves it and i go like she for real loves it or or like she because like i don't feel like it's like kind of a trash show like it's not yeah. really like it's a real lovable trash. show and chancellor and sierra both just started <gasps> laughing and they were like gee shire way to call her out for like <laughs> shitty tv but it's good shit yeah it's like a real good shit mm -hmm. so we need we're gonna watch that we don't have anything else that we've been watching we've been pretty busy so mm -hmm. we're gonna watch a big show tomorrow night what are we watching me opening for tom sakura oh yeah at God com damn it, I at, keep forgetting. At Comedy Works in front of 300 people, which is crazy because yes. we saw him two months ago perform in front of 10,000 people. Do you think you're going to call anybody a racist like you no. did in Hawaii? God, no. It's going to be a sold out show. <laughs> That's good. I would, And that lady was racist. If you're racist, <laughs> you're getting called out, you know? Mm. If I ask you if you like black dick and you say I'm not answering that question, that means you're racist. So, can we also just talk about On Love is Blind, the black girl who was totally racist? I don't think she was racist. Yeah. She was like, I can't believe I'm marrying a white dude. I need to stick to my kind. I'm always like black people forever. And I can't believe I'm wearing a white, marrying a white person. That's racist. Well, I don't know if it's racist, but. Well, I can't say that. No. <laughs> if you said it, it'd be racist. Right. So, it's racist. No. Well, I don't know. I think there's a little double standard to that of, I don't know. I mean, I guess you're right. <clears throat> I think I have the coronavirus I think this. you do too. I don't know what's wrong with you. I don't know. I hope I can't go through the microphone to people's ears. All right. So why don't we... On to the next one. Hey, babe, can we talk about something? Yes, 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 yes. What are we talking about today? Well, let's talk about the coronavirus. Okay. What do you think? I don't I don't pay attention to any of that do shit. Do you care about it at all? Zero percent. If okay. I get it and I die, I die. Yeah. You can't I'm I can't live my life like that, worried about Yeah. Like I have a cough right now, but I've had a cough a million times. I don't think I would never wear a mask. Yeah. I well they're think, not they're telling people not to wear masks. You're only supposed to wear a mask if you have coronavirus. And the Surgeon General is telling people to stop buying masks because they're running out of them for people who actually need them, like the people with coronavirus. Yeah, I can never wear a mask. Like it just to me it looks so Chancellor stupid. bought all black ones on Amazon <laughs> so they would match his outfits. See, that's Chancellor though. I don't I rarely match my outfits, more or less my accessory life-saving outfits mm -hmm. but uh yeah i don't i don't know anything about it i gotta be honest shit like this i just clock out on yeah. i don't give a shit unless someone told me that you had coronavirus but what am i gonna not hang out with you or like me yeah what would i what yeah I, what would you do if i had corona you know, i would just hang out with you I don't know. Are we going to... I thought it only hurts like young people and... Yeah. And every, every health professional that I've spoken to that has been in my chair, I've asked them if it's, you know, anything to worry about at all or a big deal or whatever. And they're like, eh, no. Yeah, I don't worry. I can't control it. I don't... I guess you could control it a little bit if you just lived in a bubble or something. But shit I can't control, I don't worry about. So if someone... I also feel like you probably have a really good immune system. And so do I. <laughs> I just have a tough... I'm just tough. Yeah. But also, like, we're around... Pe I think the more exposure yeah. you have to people and germs, the more you can fight off people Well, just and being germs. broke and comedian, just like, we all are just... I've just tough shit out for the whole time. I don't... It's like, I love my mom, but she's the most, my mom could, the, some pollen could blow through the air and she'd sneeze and she'd be like, well, I'm out of work for three days. I'm like, tough, like you got to. That's what Isn't our, it interesting that our moms both had kids? <laughs> well, I don't know. What, why? You need to like expand tough, on that. Like toughness wise. Oh, well, uh, yeah. I mean. Like I took my mom to get Botox and fillers and she was freaking out. And I looked at her and I was like, mom. You've had three kids. You can't handle a needle that doesn't even hurt in your forehead five times that takes less than five minutes. She was like, well, I've just never had it before. She was like freaking out. I was like, how, how did you have children? 
Well, that's true. Then I say my mom's a wuss, and then I remember she has had three kids, which is more pain than probably anything I'll go through. So Maybe. I just wish my mom had a little more tough it out in her sometimes. My mom, I mean, you can't quit on a baby, so that's why I guess they you have. You can. Plenty of people do. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank God they didn't. But uh, And now to our next segment. Yeah, so, Are you all right? Uh, I'm all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right, time for my favorite segment of the week. I need some music for it. I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, do it live. This it? Well, do it live. <laughs> Fuck it. Do it live. Do it live. I- all right. So I don't have a big. We had one Are You All Right this week because <laughs> Shire called herself on it as we're laying there in bed. She's like, I know this is going to end up a Are You All Right on the show, but she's like, Go ahead, explain your stupid ass <laughs> thoughts that you have in your dumb I ass head. I said, what if you never actually really wanted to have kids? You just always said that you wanted to have kids so that you could get girls. Um, but that's why, like, every time we go by, like, anytime we see kids ever and you're like, oh, there's kids, like, whatever, and you're excited about it. It, that's like just like all part of the <laughs> the thing, except really you don't ever want to have them. But you are just waiting for me to say that I don't ever want to have them so that you can like give up the. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why <laughs> sometimes I have to say, are you all right? <laughs> and I think that's going to be the first hit song on the CD. Mm. Just go, are you all right? Can you imagine that at the beat? Give me a beat. I it just sounds like a chicken. Are you all right? You and then you just say something about something weird like you wore a fake Gucci belt to work. Are you all right? You said <laughs> at the stop sign. Are you all right? <laughs> your six year old daughter learned to twerk. Are you all right? You don't think that should be hot? You saw your feet on the internet. You saw your feet on the internet. <laughs> Are you all right? It's like your mama jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's Are You Alright? Yeah, made go, into a song. It'd be hot if I just put a little beat behind. Let me see if I got a beat. I need some beats if anybody has some. Um, are you alright? <laughs> you. No, that's you know, it. No. Tss, tss, tss. Well, anyway, I got to get it. But I think I can write a song like that. Just go, Are You Alright? Mm. And then I just say some random. That would be the most annoying song ever. But it would hit. But I don't think that you can say it in that way. Are you all right? Not like that. Not like How that. How do you want me to say that? Maybe just like more gangster and less chicken. Are you all right? Yeah, that's better. Some of it has that song though. Are you all right? No, that sounds like a chicken. Are you all right? <laughs> Yo, for real, you all right? Are you all right? It's got to be a little in there. No, I hate it. <laughs> You ate the full, are you all right? Yes. But what about the gangster with a little bit? Gangster chicken. Are you all right? No. Are you all right? That's better. All right. Well, we'll see. So that was Shire's only are you all right moment of the week. Overall, she was pretty good. <laughs> trying to think if you did anything today. Uh, well, today she got a, are you all right? When we were out in the cold and she was walking directly behind me to... <laughs> Thinking I could block the wind, but you were blocking the wind. It's so creepy to have someone just walk right behind you. We're walking <laughs> through the CU campus. We're going to get my brother some Grateful Dead tickets. So it's just a little windy after Shire wakes up and says, "Oh, it's so nice out today. It's short sleeve shirt weather." Well, it was, and I was fine when we were not in like direct wind. No, but then I was just trailing right behind you which you hated <laughs> which have i ever told the story about how i got away from the creep show in new york that was like stalking me <laughs> no but i maybe you have you told it to me it's absurd but go ahead so it, it fits right in with this segment i had someone that was following me i just moved to new york and i had someone that was following me walking through the street and we got to a, a crosswalk and I kind of sidestepped and like backstepped just like super casually until I worked my way right behind him. And then I started trailing him. And then he was like whipping around looking back and forth because he knew I was trailing him like he'd been trailing me and he took off running. And then I went into H&M. Okay, don't ever do that again. And don't anybody take that advice. 
If you feel like someone's creepily behind you, do not go try to get behind them. Yeah, because then they're like, oh shit, she must be a cop. <laughs> but you don't look like a cop at all. Well, I, I mean, know. I see a little logic to it. I guess if you out crazy, crazy is what they always say. Yeah. But I had some friends that did that, that they they lived together and they had like, a, who this might take the podcast full circle, but they were like in an f- argument, their roommates, they lived together, they're in a full argument. And then they're like, one was like throwing shit at the other one. And then they got like face to face. And they're like screaming at each other. And then one, the other one just kissed the other one right on the <laughs> mouth. And the other one freaked the fuck out. And then he was like, then he asked people about it. And they're like, yeah, he just out crazy you. And I was like, I don't know. You guys might have had some sexual frustration as roommates or something. Because I've been in arguments, but I'm never just going to. Oh, you know how much I fucking hate you? Just <laughs> kiss you right in the <laughs> mouth. It's, it's a weird story. It's pretty funny, though. Yeah, I guess. It was funny. If it didn't happen to me. I think that you can only be the person who initiates the kiss if you know you're wrong in the argument. Because <laughs> if you're right, that's what's so infuriating. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But if you know you're wrong and you're just like egging the person along, then finally you have to like give it up somehow. It's a weird story. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they when the comics told us, we were, I remember they were like, we all laughed and we we're like, oh. And then when they left, we we're like... I don't know, man. That was, are you guys all right? <laughs> hey, all right. Oh, Teddy. All right. What do we have left? Is this, have we come to the end of the road? We've come to the end. Anything else we want to plug? It's been an hour. It's a good mm-hmm. long hour episode. Yeah. What do we have coming up? Anything good? What was that? Oh. It's the mischief music. <laughs> Teddy was pretty good during this. Teddy was so good. Teddy He's boy. The best boy. We got Teddy... We took him and got him all cleaned up. Yeah, and what did the groomer say to you? Because I brought him in and he had like, will you explain it? I don't he know. just had like a little matted dread hanging from the end of his little, little... His wiener. <laughs> and the, the, this older black dude that did it was like, man, he, he's he got his pieces all matted. No, say? his unit. Oh, yeah. What the hell's on his unit? His unit's all matted up. I was like, yeah, could you... Uh, trim up his wiener and he's been a lot happier yeah and he got his nails trimmed and he he's a pretty he was spoiled rotten while i was gone Shire let him sleep in the bed i'm sure no him. he didn't want to sleep in the bed any of the nights every time i put him up there he would jump down and lay by the front door because he was hoping you would come home but every morning he would run in and i'd pick him up and put him in bed with me and we would snuggle he lives a good life you got a good daddy you, you got, got a good all right, well, that's another episode of Dead, Dead to Us. Us. We will be back next week. As always, shout out to Tom Gordon for making the magic. Shout out for you guys to you guys for listening. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have anything for us, send them in. You can email me, branttobler at gmail.com. Patreons, you know what to do. Just hit us up in the private messages. If you want us... Uh, to watch anything if you have some sports questions for shire if you want to know if you're all right (laughs) you let us know if you want to babysit teddy can we let teddy be good with anybody right i don't know we're babysitting a dog next week so it's gonna be real hectic around here it's gonna be a party it's gonna be a party all right guys we love you thank you guys so much for listening and we will see you next week week (laughs) good teamwork (laughs) goodbye the end of the end of my career there was a couple times like the, the job almost got me you know what i mean because mm-hmm. i would like I, I worked undercover for a long time and the thing that can happen to you when you work undercover is you you stop getting scared like you get to a point where you're like 
bro, I got to figure it out. Like nobody's ever on to me. If, if they start to think they're on to me, I can talk, I've talked my way out of it a million times. Like I, you get too ballsy or too brave. Like, and you try to, you're then like fear keeps you safe. Cause it keeps you from agreeing to meet in a location that, you know, puts you at a major disadvantage or whatever. Yeah. So, um, one time I did this deal at two, one time I did this deal and we are in the hood, man, in a, in a, in a legit project. And I'm with this smoking hot girl that's working as an informant for the FBI. And I, I, I'm like, this is where you go to buy heroin. Like this literally, it was a, in the hood. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, ah, this is makes no sense. How you're still alive. <laughs> and, um, so we, she takes me there to meet her guy and we go into the stairwell get halfway up and a dude comes out of this apartment and starts walking down toward us. And he's wearing just like Jordan shorts, you know, mm-hmm. like they're Jordan shorts, real baggy. And he has this giant gun, like in the pocket of these sh- shorts. So they're like pulling down from the weight of it. And it's like a stupid looking like old West, type revolver like a <laughs> outlaw Josie Wells type of revolver uh-huh. and I'm like I just kept thinking I'm like this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen like who how did you get that gun <laughs> so he has it and then he pulls it out and points it right at it. he's only like three feet away from it. it's like three feet between the barrel of that gun and my face and I'm mm-hmm. downstairs from him so he tells me to take my clothes off Oh, and I'm God. like, this is not good. Like, and I'm at that point, I'm like, like man, he probably has no inclination whatsoever to want to shoot me, but he's like 19 and he's holding a gun that looks very old. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I'm afraid he's going to accidentally pull the trigger. Like his fat ass is going to slip on the stairs or something. <laughs> and then at the same time, he's going to pull the trigger and blow yeah. my head off. So I'm, I'm like, Oh, I got to think of what I'm going to do here. And I'm saying gun, like, dude, get the gun out of my face. You know, you yeah. have to just hold it down. And nobody, the thing about undercover work that sucks is the, the equipment is so shitty. Uh-huh. Like the smaller and more covert the transmitter, the less wattage it has. <sighs> so you know, like a uh, key one that looks like a key fob on your keychain is the best because no one will ever make it for a recorder. But the wattage is very low, so they have to be. Your team has to be very close with the antenna on the receiver, and they were only hearing chunks of what I was saying, so they're not hearing gun, and <clears throat> so no one's coming in to rescue me. And I, I give the buzzword once, Mickey Mouse, mm-hmm. and uh, no one. You know, I'm like, hey, this is some Mickey Mouse bullshit. When they hear Mickey Mouse, they're supposed to come running, but no one's come running. And I'm like, I run around here, me and this hot chick in the stairwell in the hood. So I'm like, maybe I can quick step him, boom, grab the gun and pull him forward because he's fat. He'll just fall down, oh, yeah. right? So while I'm thinking this, the door to the apartment opens again. And this time a scary looking dude pops out and he goes, hurry the fuck up. And it goes back in. And I'm like, that guy looks like Nomar from The Wire. Like that uh-huh. guy is for real. So... I'm like, I got, I got to do something. So finally, as I'm like getting naked and turning around for him and he, he's got my hat and he's filling in it. And, uh, I'm like, bro, do, can you get more gun? <laughs> and he's like, like this one. And I'm like, yeah, that's the coolest gun I've ever seen. Like I, I'm from the cut. Like I can sell though. Yeah. Like this, you know, that, that to me is worth more than what the heroin we're about to buy. I can sell the shit ton of those if you can get them. And he's like, oh, maybe I might, I might be able to hook you up. And I'm like, awesome, dude. Like, if I take that gun and show it to my dude, like, we're in business. Who will order as many of these as you can get? And probably any other gun you can get your hands on. So he's like, all right, 250 and I'm like, that's a ridiculous price for this gun, but I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. like it's not my money. So I buy the heroin and the, like he hands me this gun, which has <laughs> three bullets in it. Out of, it gets loaded. Yeah. Three bullets. Not not one in the chamber. Like if he would have pulled the trigger, it would have went empty. He would have had to pull it twice to get to a bullet. But 
Um, yeah. So oh, that God. was the scary. Like I was, I was for sure. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to die here, but this is going to go very bad. Like uh, people are going to get hurt. They're like, yeah. how can I keep this girl from getting hurt? That's kind of my job. So, and it just ended great. Like yeah. they made a great case. <laughs> like the feds had a, a buy while the guy's armed, which was huge. It helps them get to the guy they were really trying to get to. So yeah. it worked out awesome. But yeah. I had that one, and then uh, we were in a, got in a shootout when I was on the fugitive tracking team there toward the end of my career. Um, oh. Same day that Chad Daniels was performing at Morty's, so I went straight to the show after <laughs> the uh, shootout. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I, saw, I was like, that's, that's where I want to be right now. I, I got to yeah. decompress. So well, yeah, went sure out with Chad Daniels. Your adrenaline was probably going crazy, right? It was, and I didn't shoot like it. Um, what happened was there was a guy. So we tracked cell phones, right? That's how we find fugitives uh-huh. that nobody could find. So if you had a cell phone for your fugitive, we we had the equipment. We had a, a truck worth half a million dollars that was basically a giant cell phone antenna and um, all these computers and stuff inside. We, we could track your phone. As long as it's on, we'll find you. <laughs> so we we were doing that on this guy and um, the drug unit for the state police there that I, I had come from, they had this guy was supposed to drop off a bunch of heroin and also had some warrants for him. So they just wanted us to be in the area in case they lost him on surveillance so, so we could help find him again. So we're just hanging loose and they lose him. So we're having a tough time finding the phone. And he had made the surveillance according to that team. Like he saw them, made a bunch of crazy maneuvers, the car did, and then he bells out on foot. <laughs> so they lose it. So we're like, ah, oh, he's probably turned his phone off, but it would come back on, so we'd get a little closer and it would go off again. Well, this informant that had turned the drug guys on to him called in an address to his handler, said, Go check this apartment because there's a dude there that he probably would go to if he thinks there's trouble. So we go there and when we get into the apartment complex, no one's radios working. Like we're in a dead spot. So we can't communicate. Our cell phones even suck for calling each other. So we know the phone is in here somewhere because it keeps coming on. Mm -hmm. So we go to where the address was given and you know, it's one of those, you go in a main door and there's like six units inside. So I go two door, two, two main doors down and I sit in my pickup truck and I, I do have a police raid vest on, but that's it. My man, a pickup truck. Otherwise you wouldn't know who I am. And then I have a bunch of like cars that do look like police cars down farther from me. So I'm just the eyeball, right? I see him come out. I call it off. Those guys are to drive in whip him up so turns out the informant has the address wrong and the guy comes out of the door right in front of me and he, he sees me like in a police across my back uh-huh. and he just stops and he's just locked eyes with me and i'm trying to call to my friends they have the radio down on my lap and i'm keying it up and it just goes every time i key it up but finally i just throw it and I'm like I'm getting the fuck up so I get out of the car and I'm telling him to put his hands up and he drops this red bag next to him and then he reaches back into his waistband and I see like a flash of metal and my brain is really not working I'm just like all right flash of metal (laughs) boom he pulls it out it's a gun he's pointed at me I'm like that's a gun and I just I'm so slow like I I don't know what what's happening to me i'm just getting older you know i'm losing my edge or what but i'm slow but i do i do dart to this car right to my left and get behind it and then pull my weapon so then i see i look through the back windshield and dude instead of running off is coming at me with the gun and come starts to circle around to come after me and so i start circling around so we're just going in circles around the car and he keeps trying to reach over the car and shoot i like i can see him squeezing uh-huh. but the gun is not firing so i knelt down low and finally 
he's kind of stopped circling. I'm on the passenger side door. He's at the driver's side door trying to reach over. He's squeezing, no firing. And the, the weirdest shit goes to your brain because I'm like, bro, like, is he trying to kill me? Like, is the gun jammed? Do I need to wait to be fired upon before I fire back? You know? And I'm yeah. like, what, what in the fuck is going on? This never happened. <laughs> so finally, I'm like, dude, get in the fight. So I kind of yell at myself and I, I spring up and I, I, right before I came up, I'm like, just fire, empty this clip through this passenger door window, yeah. through the driver's door window and just take this motherfucker out. So I do that and I, I come up and the guy's gone. And then I see out of the corner of my eye, he's running between two buildings. So... I chase him and then I stop for a second because I have a clear shot of him now. Uh-huh. And I'm like, all right, shoot, take him out before he hurts some, another cop. And then my brother's like, ah, no, CNN, he's black, you're white, don't uh-huh. shoot. Like, that's all the way, regardless of what happened before this, you're going to be all over the news as the guy who shot this kid in the back. Yeah. Right? You know, turns out he's 35. He <laughs> looked like 17. So that's giving me pause too. Yeah. And I don't fire. I just chase after him round the corner, like a fucking idiot, not tactically at all. Just full spread. And he is waiting on me, but about 50 meters in front of me, like he has a gun pointed, he has a beat on me and I'm like, fuck. So I jump back behind the building. And then when I pop back over, he is running again. And again, I'm like, I should shoot because one of my friends, is going to run into him and get shot. The gun's going to work this time, is what I kept thinking. And so I'm yelling gun as loud as I can. Hopefully people can hear me. His radios aren't working. And I don't fire this time because I'm like, I am tired. (laughs) I am very far away. There's nothing but apartments behind him. Straight around into some kid's bedroom window is going to happen. That's what I'm thinking. So just don't fire. Just keep chasing. Finally, dudes kept up to me. Two guys that have rifles. And I'm like, all right, here we go. This, now I feel better. You guys stay with me. Let's keep going after him. We run around this next corner, around the corner between the other building. Now we're in the big open, like, courtyard parking lot. And he's running. And I see my buddy come up in his gold charger. He's on my team. And he just comes to a screeching halt. The guy runs right up to his driver's window and tries to fire into the driver's window, but the gun's not going off again. And my buddy's like laid down in the seat, and he comes back up. He didn't have any time to draw his gun yet. So he pops out. We're running right by him now. He joins us, and he's like, he's got a gun. We're like, we know. We know. (laughs) So I'm like, you go with me. We'll go around this side of the next building. You guys take this side. He's going to have to turn left. We'll catch him in the middle. There's no way he can make this privacy fence that's in the back. He's too tired. So we do that, and we, we meet. We round the corner. There's no bad guy. We just see each other. And I'm like, fuck, he made the fence. So let's go over the fence. So we do that. We get right by the fence, and then we hear, boom, 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 like five shots. The loudest I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, he shoot to the fence, you know, get out, everybody get out. So I get behind this big metal electrical box thing and uh, everybody else is down on the ground and the, the, the shooting stops and then I hear somebody like screaming and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So one of my guys on my team just got there from another direction he jumps up on the electrical box, peeks over the fence, and starts screaming that we have a man down. So oh. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, how do we have a man down? And me and another buddy pull this privacy fence down because we're just like full of adrenaline. So we just pull a whole panel of it down. They don't make them very good in the hood anyway, yeah. so they're easy <laughs> to pull down. But uh, we see through the backyard now, and the bad guy is on his back, and he is just kind of moving it was weird. Like he's just kind of moving like an animatron at Disney world or something like real mechanical with his legs and arms. And he's making like weird groaning sounds. 
And then there's a guy I'd never seen before, just in a, in a flannel and a T-shirt, and he's got a leg holster. He's one of our guys. And um, he's got blood all over him, and he's got his um, left hand raised in the air. And so he's got he's on his knees and with one hand kind of bear crawling. And we run up to him, me and another guy, um, pull him to the side, start cutting his clothes, open the things really we been taking a shot and the bad guy is dying next to us this guy our guy was not shot at all see no wounds and when i look up his left um, trigger finger is just kind of hanging there it's not much attached still and it's that's where all the blood's coming from so we wrap that to his chest so it can't flop around i'm like i don't want his finger to fall off you know let me put it back on so we wrap that to his chest, um, call for an ambulance, and then walk over. This guy, watch him die, basically. There's nothing we could do. He had mm-hmm. been shot like five times, starting like his belly button up to his neck. And I guess what happened was um, with this guy, this other state police guy who was off duty, joined the fight, he heard some stuff on radio traffic, came in and saw the guy make the fence, went over the fence after him, and when he did so, the guy has, was beaten down on him with the gun drawn. And he kind of like landed on him, had his gun out. And while he held the bad guy's gun, like kind of pushed it into his chest, he just started firing from the belt up. And while shooting the bad guy, shot his own finger. Oh, shit. It went through his finger into the bad guy. So yeah, it was just a nightmare. And that was my worst nightmare was if I don't shoot this guy, someone's going to run into the wrong side of that gun yeah. and not know it's there and get hurt. So I was real fucked up for a while afterward, even though, you know, our guy was fine. They were able to get his finger back on. He's, he's still a trooper today and um, no problem. But it was so real. The guy's gun didn't own it. Test fired fine when they got it to the lab. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows why his gun wasn't firing, other than it has a weird like safety built in behind the handle that you have to depress with your palm or your thumb meets your trigger finger before the trigger will pull. And he was kind of had the gangster pose sideways. Yeah. And he would point it. So I think he just was holding it wrong where it wouldn't fire. But he also had a forty four caliber revolver in his back pocket that was Jesus. full of ammo. But for some reason, he never dropped the gun that wouldn't fire and pulled that one out. So it was just like luck or fate oh. or God or whatever you believe yeah. in was just looking out for everybody. But I, I just was really fucked up over it because I, I was like, man, for a minute I thought this trooper had been shot to pieces. And it would have been only because this guy was running free when I had a beat. I could have put the, the guy down you yeah. know, and I didn't. Thankfully, I, that's not something I ended up having to live with because it, it didn't happen. But it, the whole, it was just the weirdness of it and the helplessness of it is what fucked me up, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. That's, like, you know, so that's, not to be too serious on your comedy podcast. No, no, no. It's, that's, that's what I want to hear. The, <laughs> the, there's plenty of comedy podcasts. I like to hear the real stories yeah. and that's crazy. Yeah. That's kind yeah, of great. It, yeah, believe it or not, one of the major reasons why I decided stand up was a better profession yeah. than that job. <laughs> After that, it's like I'm trying to get on Comedy Central, get yeah. me shot dead in the hood, yeah. in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I think you made the right choice. I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> That's so, well, yeah, you never have to be worried about being scared to do stand-up after the shit you've been through. <laughs> uh, that's there are great. times where I just see people weird out about dumb stuff. Because when, when shit like that happens to you, and you've been through some serious shit in your life, too. Yeah. I mean, it's like when, you, when you've when you gone through something that's real, you're like, dude, are you really going to fucking throw a hissy fit over this bullshit right now? Yeah. Like, did, did that person really hurt you? Like, come on. What are we talking about? Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm with blow you. Blow it off. Yeah. Wait, to me, and then the, kind of some of the crazy shit I've been through, I don't think, I don't realize it. Like, I got robbed with a shotgun in my house, but people yeah, were like, were you I scared? And I was like, I wasn't really scared at the moment, but then after it was over, then I was like, 
I, I don't know. It's just such a weird, the whole, those situations like that are so fucking No, so you crazy. nailed it, dude. Why you, why you went through is what everybody goes through. Like you, you almost, your body, your body and your mind, mostly your mind protects you when you're in the moment, yeah. right? It, it does weird shit chemically and all this other stuff to keep you super focused. That's why you remember dumb little things. Like you probably during that robbery, you're like, Man, I heard, I realized the dishwasher was ready. <laughs> yeah. You know, that happens all the time because you hear weird shit like that because your senses become more in tune and to protect you. And it falls back. We're not as good at, at using it as we used to be. You know, when we were cavemen, that shit was really effective. You know, yeah. we just don't really know what to do with it now. So we just experience this weird thing. And then afterwards, though, is where it catches up to you and you're like, Fucking could have died back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could have been all over. I'm 32 years old or whatever you exactly. were. Exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it's so it, weird. That it feels like everything slowed so far down, and then I was like, this is the weirdest shit, man. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. And it just, it, it, you go through a real funk, I think. I don't know if you did, too, yeah. but a lot of people do, like almost like a depression afterwards. It, I mean, I, I don't know if it's left over from all the chemical shit that was going on in, your, in our brains at the time. Or if it's just this, you know, real, like this, I didn't realize the world was this real and this finite, you know, yeah. and that, that's what causes it. But you go through a real weird period there. Oh, no, for sure. Well, cause I don't like post-traumatic stress. Exactly. Is, but know? I dealt with that. So I was on the patio at the comedy store when the guy got murdered, like maybe 10 feet from Fuck. me. And I thought he was going to kill us like there's a moment where i was like he, he's i just was like he's gonna shoot us but then afterwards everyone's like the day after they're like ptsd i was like no that's for like real like war heroes and stuff i just no. but then like a day, or, a day or two after i would just be laying in bed and i was like or i'd hear you know pops and stuff and i was like oh shit i think it did affect me i think i wanted to pretend like it didn't affect me or try to tell myself it didn't affect me but just Dude, I mean, it's seeing someone get so murdered. real. Yeah, it was it's fucking crazy, man. And it happens to any. I mean, it's the word trauma is built in there. It's about trauma. It doesn't matter if it's combat in the military or yeah. police work or getting robbed or getting assaulted or you know you were there present at the Boston bombing or whatever. Now it is yeah. like it's real, and then your body goes, your brain goes through so much weird shit afterward. It's like hard to figure out. I'm glad they're, they're like working on it obviously now, yeah. but like I can tell you right now, like I, I, I've battled with this. Like, I think I should go see someone over because after 21 years of, you know, you're, you have all these adrenaline dumps and these highs all the time. And then when that's gone, you have these lows and your body's not supposed to go through cycles like that. It just kind of changes things in you. And then PTSD and all this stuff. Like I, and it's not like I have a, you know, it doesn't affect my day to day, but like sometimes I have, I, you know, there's been a handful of instances in my life where I've gotten really drunk <sighs> and been on Adderall or something where I became a maniac, you know? Yeah. And I, I attribute it to inner de Like Pat McAfee told me that once. He's like, dude, you know, you got demons in you. You got to be careful. Yeah. with that stuff because you basically are unleashing the demons. You don't know what they're going to do. And I, I'm sure you've done that as well. Like yeah. afterward, you like, ask, like, why did I fucking try to fight everybody in that place? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. you just have this, this shit built up, man, and it needs to get out, you know? So you just got to find healthier ways to get it out. You know? Yeah. That alcohol will bring it out on occasion or two. It will. <laughs> If you want to know how fucked up you are, like emotionally or psychologically, just get, get drink a bunch of whiskey. <laughs> like you'll find out and let someone record you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, everybody always talks about the bad days as a cop. Like, is there, what about, is there one good day as a cop that you remember? Like this was a, this is why I love being a cop or a fun, a real fun cop day. So many good days, bro. So many, like being undercover is just hilarious. Like, just mm -hmm. hilarious story. Like, it's all the in-between shit that happens, you know? Like, one time we we were fucking following some big time. We were working for the DEA. Basically, we were doing surveillance on a DEA target. Like, a big deal target. And he was um, moving a bunch of money. So, like, it was supposed to be a million dollars. 
that he's <laughs> moving. So we're our only job is to do surveillance, go unnoticed, get plate numbers, see where he goes, and um, because that's going to be a stash house. So they need to identify that. So we're watching him, and beforehand we had this big meeting. You know, where they were like, listen, this guy's all about counter surveillance. You know, he may have guys out looking for a tell, you know, so mm-hmm. you, you have to be very careful. Make sure there is no police shit physical in your car. Sanitize it because if you have to stop and pee and somebody's following you, they're going to look for radios and little badges and cup holders and shit. Yeah. So we, we had to go through all this and buddy check each person's car, make sure it's clean or whatever. And then my one buddy is late. He came from two and a half hours north to join the show. So he had a, a girl in Indianapolis that he stayed with um, whenever he would come in town. And he, she was a cop, actually. She was an Indianapolis cop. He, he had spent the night with her, got up late. He's like, I'm on my way. I'm going to miss the briefing, but I'm on my way. We're like, okay. So he joins the surveillance about a half hour after into it, blends in. And then my sergeant has to call a screeching halt to the whole thing. And he's like, hey, 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 abort, abort, abort. Everybody meet at uh, the, the Walmart parking lot so or wherever it was. So we go to this parking lot. We stayed, and I'm like, oh, shit, something went down. You know, somebody get burnt or what? So we get there, and he goes, did we not have a big meeting about – making sure we were extra inconspicuous today for this, this job. I'm like, this is a big fucking deal. And we're like, yeah, what are, you, what are you talking about? And he goes, walk over here. So we go to, he goes, look at Jeff Price's fucking car. He had just got this brand new white Tacoma pickup truck that the department gave him. And on the passenger side, it is spray painted all the way down. I love man meat. It has a giant cock and ball at the end of it. This, girl's ex-boyfriend that had been giving her a hard time <laughs> about him going over there spray painted the fuck out of his truck like uh, a billboard <laughs> i love man me dick and balls and i read it out loud like like just got his head hanging and I, I read it out loud and we're all laughing and he goes god damn it and we're like what he goes i thought that was an exclamation point <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that shit has happened all. Like, if I ever make a cop movie, it's going to be like that. Like, there's so much just funny shit that happens in between the police work. You know? Oh, I'm sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you got to make that anyway, movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the, our proudest there, I think we actually saved the girl from a kidnapping live. Like, she was duct tape in a hotel bathroom. Oh, going to be killed after the ransom was, you know, taken care of. And uh, we interrupted the whole thing. by Jack and ended up, me and another guy made a vehicle stop on a car that didn't look right and was leaving the area of that gas station where the last call was made. And turned up to look like it was probably them and there was a hotel key in their console. So we sent uh, a tactical unit to the hotel. They kicked it in. Boom. There was a guy holding her hostage with a gun, her in the bathroom, duct tape over her mouth and hands down to her underwear, sitting on the toilet. It was the real deal. Holy yeah. shit. But, but you know, all those, like, those always start out as some kind of, uh, and this one kind of began that way because there was a bit of a story about this, this rich girl, the rich dad, and she had a, a real drug problem so we're you know these usually start out as she's in cooperation with the would-be kidnappers and just needs money from dad you know Mm -hmm. so everybody went into it kind of thinking that and then come to find out you know you still got to treat it as if it's real luckily we did come to find out shit this is a real it was a real real fucking kidnapping and after they were to get the quarter million dollars they were going to kill her because she does know them because they do yeah deal drugs to her that's crazy. So, Would I'm yeah. sure I'm sure you still have your instincts of like if you saw a car go out of the gas station you'd be like, do you still have it or have you tried to shut that off? I I think it still works, man. Because there be, and there's been times where it's almost to a detriment because it'll be late at night and 
I'll pull up at a gas station. Like say I'm coming back from a gig or something and it's three in the morning and it's just me at this gas station. We're out in the middle of nowhere. And then the wrong kind of car pulls up and I'm like, mm, those guys don't look right. You know, yeah. I will, I usually have a gun around. I don't ever wear a gun uh-huh. ever. I didn't even really when I was a cop very much, unless it was like a guns on job that day. So I, I, I pulled out my gun a few times like that and just put it under my leg and just sat there purposely at the pump until the guys like left the gas station. Yeah. Thinking, you know, there's going to be a robbery happen and I should do something. Uh-huh. You know, I have my cell phone ready to call 911. I haven't been right in that instance yet, but maybe I was, maybe I was, and they, just, they were like, ah, there's somebody watching us. We got to leave. Go hit a different gas station. Who knows? But it happens all the time, man. Yeah. All the time. Or, or I'll see a car or, a, or just a person, and I'm like, that guy is a high level drug dealer. You know? Yeah. Like the, the nosy business drug dealer. Yeah. I'm and sure. <laughs> I I'm like sure. to think I'm right when I see it, but who knows? You know? Yeah, who knows? Uh, you can't stop the spidey senses at all. Yeah, no, I was just sad. I, I assume you yeah. just can't shut that shit off. Um, uh, let me give you a fun question or two here. Uh, what's your go-to fast food order? Oh, Taco Bell, man. It's <laughs> always the, um, the crunch wrap. Uh, I just, just nothing beats that crunch wrap. It, like it's, I'm all about consistency. It's uh, always the same and it's always awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like I've never been given a bad crunch wrap. It's foolproof. I'm with you, man. I love Taco Bell. I think that's what right? made me bond with my girlfriend. She loves that shit. <laughs> we'll uh, it's the best. She'll spend like twenty bucks. She just gets like the big burrito box and then just freezes <laughs> uh-huh. and then just like freezes at home and that's what she eats for the week. She she loves it. <laughs> I've done that move where I get I buy like um, four crunch wraps mm-hmm. and like a dozen soft tacos. Uh, the ones I know those little burritos with the like the um, kind of the Frito chips in them. Oh. I forget what they're called. I'll, I'll just buy like a dozen of those and I'll keep them in the fridge and eat on them all week. Yeah. I'll nuke it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I, and I'll just eat it all week. Yeah, love it. I'm with you. I'll do that on the road. Like if you're lucky enough to get a hotel with a little fridge and a microwave. Yeah, for I, sure. I'll go to. I'll store up Taco Bell in there for the whole weekend. Yeah, I, I hate end up having to eat like gas station food i'm like god damn it brant plan ahead a little <laughs> bit what, what are you doing to yourself yeah, right now uh, eating this egg salad sandwich <laughs> from speedway that's it that's my go-to egg salad and yeah maybe, maybe <laughs> I do some too. two-day-old sushi or sometimes sometimes people are like you fucking order i was like just leave me alone <laughs> um what's the best concert and sporting event you've ever been to um, I'm not a big like music concert mm-hmm. guy. I've only been to a, a handful in my life, but I got to say when I was in San Antonio, um, I was a young Marine. We went to see Dio and I fucking loved it. Mm-hmm. It was one of their, one of their last gigs. It was one of the last performances I think for him. Um, but yeah, because I think he died that summer. Yeah, yeah. So it was a big deal. This was in 1990, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was his, his, he died that summer. And uh, it was just really, really cool because uh, we had a banner for him and shit. And um, he, he had to throw it up on stage and they were running around with it or whatever. So it was, it was probably out of the 10 concerts maybe I've been to in my life. Um, I, re- I really enjoyed that one just because yeah. it was kind of a milestone. He had passed away. And God, now that I think about it, probably within three or four weeks after that concert. Yeah, it's crazy. It's weird. So, yeah. So I, mean, I remember them announcing it a muster. Like we were <laughs> out there in the morning in a formation and they like announced it. They had passed away. I was like, fuck, are you kidding me? Damn. So, um, I want to go. I, I, I want to be a concert guy though. Yeah. I want to be a music. I, w- I did go see Metallica this year and it was way better than I could have ever imagined. Like they have not lost much at all. Yeah. They're great. I would assume. And, uh, 
Uh, yeah, and um, oh, watch his name that opens up for him. Yeah. Tim Brewer opened up for him, which is like, awesome. Great. Yeah, it was, it was just amazing. Big circle stage and just walking around, fucking with people and getting them amped up for twenty minutes. It's great. So cool. Um, yeah. Well, what's are you? What's your kind of music? I like all of it, man. I'm, as generic yeah. as the answer as that is, I really like uh, live music. So I listen to everything from Metallica to rap to I like I like country a lot, which was good moving back here to Denver because there was no country in L.A. But I uh, yeah, I just I have a respect for it because I suck so bad at like singing or dancing or like I just have no uh-huh. rhythm. So I've always wanted to be I a, love be a rock star, but. Yeah, I love I love country music, and but my so my favorite concerts like I'll go to a lot of little concerts, mm-hmm. like especially like Clayton Anderson, the guy that's a friend of mine. Just like, I love his fucking music. Yeah. I don't know how he hasn't blown up, but when he like if he comes to Indianapolis, which he does a few times a year, and throws a you know three hundred person concert at um, a beer garden or something, I am fucking there. Yeah, like I re- I enjoy the fuck out of those kind of concerts. I like the intimate setting. I just I get weirded out at huge concerts with hordes of people, uh-huh. like in giant arenas or whatever. You know, just kind of I don't know something about kind of weirds me out. Yeah. Well, is there is there one song that always makes you happy when you hear it? Um. Uh, to boy. Or you- I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, I like anything Bob Seger. Yeah. Makes me happy. Mostly because, I mean, I love, you know, my dad listened to Bob Seger. He's still alive, but my, uh-huh. not, I mean, my dad <laughs> is still alive. So, um, he always listened to Bob Seger when we were in the car. Fucking A track. Just so, <laughs> I mean, to the point where I was very sick of Bob Seger, you know, as a kid, but it always takes me back, you know, of us like him taking me somewhere or something. So when I yeah. hear, um, you know, Fire Lake or anything like that, I just immediately, that's where my mind's eye travels back to. Yeah. So my first, when a Bob Seger song starts, first thing I remember is being a kid, boom, getting mint chip ice cream with my dad at Compton's Cow Palace. That's if I can go and him taking me to go see a, a movie that he shouldn't be taking me to see, I can't tell my mom, you know, like <laughs> That's awesome. that kind of shit. Yeah. So yeah. he always brings that out of me. Yeah. I love Seeger. Yeah. Like against the winds, one of my favorite songs and it kind of, uh, it just reminds yeah. me of that comedy life on the road and chasing these dreams. And I, he, I, he's one of the only people I haven't seen live and he came to Denver last year. And of, of course I was on the road, the one, time he came but he i know i'm running out of chances but man i'd love to see him once because he is yeah he's awesome well it just i just love anyone that's a, a real storyteller yeah. you know with their with their lyrics like if you're up there if you're telling me a story i really don't if it's a good story i really don't care what genre you're throwing it to me at you know yeah i'm with you man um what about sporting event you have a, a sporting event that's that's your favorite yeah, man, by far when I, I mean, sentimental, but my buddy Pat McAfee that I worked with until recently, um, he, was, they were playing Pittsburgh and they were, it was a home game and getting their asses handed to them. Like uh-huh. fucking the Steelers were handing us our asses and uh, Pat had a fake and threw for a first down and to, I I forget which tight end caught the ball, but almost like came a fucking hair from breaking a tackle and scoring a touchdown. Like (laughs) I was going to lose my ever loving (laughs) mind. If if Pat throws a touchdown against the Steelers, his hometown team, I was, dude, we were just going nuts. And uh, he got, like pulled down by his shoelace, this uh, guy, and that close to scoring a touchdown off a very well thrown ball. That's awesome. That. Like, yeah, <laughs> and you know, and it's your buddy, and you're like, oh my god. Of course, he has this awesome seat, so we're down low. We're like, oh fuck. And uh, my kid was with me, so we, you know, he was going crazy. It was, it was just fucking awesome, man. Because I, you know, like as a specialist, and he, you know. 
probably the best punter that has ever done it. So he can be very proud of that. Yeah. But yeah, like he gets that's an extra cool moment for him. You yeah, know, yeah. if he would have gotten a, a fucking touchdown under his would have been a good running play, but that's awesome. something he could keep forever. You know, that's a trophy that unlike any. And uh, it was a big deal, man. Yeah. Was, that's so awesome. I, over anything I went to as a kid or anything else, this one was way more personal. So that was probably the coolest live sports moment I've ever experienced. Yeah, that's a, there's nothing cooler than seeing your friends do cool shit, man. Yeah, for and sure. That's why, at least for us, man, I think girls hate it when each other do good, but. <laughs> they do. It's so that's another story but <laughs> probably get me in trouble but i actually yeah, i actually me. root for my friends a lot and i love to see them do good uh, yeah she almost did a touchdown but i mean she's gained 15 pounds in the last two weeks you know it's gonna be something like that uh well, did, did you ever get to meet peyton um no uh, never i would love to i he's, mean the he's, sheriff jesus He's my guy out here. I was I was close one time, but man, he's he's the one I can't get to. But yeah, yeah I kept waiting like for because Pat and he were actually like um, friends. Yeah, like, they 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 went places together and stuff and played golf. So I, I I always thought we would meet him, but I think Peyton's just kind of a unique animal. You know, he's yeah. almost bigger than life, so he's just kind of out there. And he just doesn't show up places much. You know. No, the time I was close, he. He it was like he was the president. He was yeah. We were at a Dirk Bentley concert and we had all access go wherever you want. But then when Peyton got there, things got weird and they moved us. And they were like, "Hey, can you move to the other side of the stage? We, we it's really packed over here." And I was like, and it wasn't packed at all. And I was like, "Okay, here he comes." And I was like, <laughs> "God damn it, I'm so close!" And uh, and then you know as they're exiting me off that side of the stage, I look over my shoulder and there he was. And I was like, "God, I was." five feet away but he, but then he moved like the president they had him in and out of there you, you know he was, uh, i was close but maybe one of these days dude, he's just bigger than like i would love to, that's why if I, if I have a bucket list he's on it yeah, like yeah. i want that's why i would love to have like a two minute conversation with yeah that dude. yeah i would just love to tell For him sure. tell him thanks man he gave me a lot of good sundays here just that story like where he kicked uh Austin Collie out of the game himself. Yeah. Like, just <laughs> points to him, tells him, you know, get out of here. And then during the game, and the coach is like, what are you, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I don't know, Peyton told me to sideline it. And he's like, get back out there. And he starts running back out. And then <laughs> Peyton points at him and then points back at the bench. And he has to leave. They have yeah. a substitute for him. Like, I mean, who gets to do that? No. Who has that presence? Well, Pat tell, and, tells yeah. Pat tells that roulette story about him that's like fucking crazy, which oh, I've heard. Yeah. And of course, you've heard, but I was just like, oh, he's he's the king. True, but true. That's yeah. the best thing about all those stories. Just you know, yeah. they, they they're true. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, I'll give you a few more. I'm sure you're getting hungry and need to stop on the road. Uh, <laughs> how about what's what's the greatest physical pain you've ever felt? Um, I broke my nose really badly like teaching I used to teach defensive tactics at the police academy and there's a, a block of instruction we do where we teach the um, trooper recruits how to like fight in their vehicle because our cars wouldn't they don't have cages mm -hmm. there's no back seat cage so we teach that the safest place to ride a prisoner is in your front uh, passenger seat so that you can reach you're not you know, if they get out of their cuffs for some reason or whatever, they're not grabbing you from behind. So we teach this little maneuver where we have the bad guy go for your gun. Like he gets, for whatever reason, gets out of his handcuffs, reaches over and grabs for your gun. You trap it and then point your, you put your forehead into the bridge of their nose. Mm -hmm. And then you po post off from this door with your back foot and you press their head against the B post of their window reach back, unlock, unlock the car door, donkey kick it open, and then suck out backward and draw your gun. So <laughs> they have to do this over and over, right? Well, a little guy, but he was the cop, big guy, was playing bad guy, two, both recruits. Little guy getting way, doing great against this big muscle dude. So I'm, I'm getting extra into it. And I, I lean forward to yell instructions to help him get out the door 
And I guess he had already, I didn't see, had tried to get out the door once and unlatched him, but the bad guy pulled him back in. So the door was just laying there. It wasn't latched. So he donkey kicks it on his own. Didn't have to reach back and unlatch it. And uh, the A-pillar of that door frame just crushes my nose. Oh. Comes back from a donkey kick. And I'm like two feet from it when I'm yelling. And just hits me so hard, there was no pain at first. Like, it felt like someone just hit me with a baseball bat. And I, I'm i like, I am so fucked up right now. Like, I don't have any teeth. My oh, whole face God. is numb. This guy, like, there's probably nothing. Like, I'm a monster to look at right now is what I'm thinking. And I can hear the blood just pouring, like uh, hitting the floor, the gym floor. So I, I'm just sitting there, and then I, recruits are looking at me in terror. And I'm like, hi, oh, God, I'm so fucked up. And I just know, I know anything from my training is as bad when you can't feel pain. This is really bad. And uh, they pull me, the instructors pull me away. And we get to the bathroom and they're trying to stop the bleeding in my nose. And I look and it's not bad. I mean, my nose is wide as fuck because mm-hmm. it's been smashed. But other than that, I got all my teeth, the feeling started to come back in my face. And I'm like, wow, oh, that's, that's all right. Kind of actually, I look pretty cool right now, actually. <laughs> you know, like, so yeah. I was kind of wearing a badge of honor here. And then um, it was real cool until about. 15 minutes went by on my way, my drive to the doctor to get looked at. I, it felt like you literally were pulling barbed wire Ugh. out of my sinuses, like that kind of pain. Like I had to pull my car over. I, I like almost couldn't drive or see the pain was so intense. Jeez. So, um, and then I, I managed to get to the doctor and they gave me a bunch of shit and I had to get a bunch of surgery to get my nose fixed. But yeah, it was like, I don't know if you've ever broken your nose no. like that, but thank God <laughs> it, it takes, oh, it takes a while to catch up to you. Like, oh. I always think about that with fighters when you watch them, like, they're like, how does he keep going? His nose is destroyed. Uh, he's not going to feel it till he's done, you know? So, so maybe the fourth round. Ugh, that that pulling barbed wire out of my nose analogy just just <laughs> gave my whole body like oh uh, <laughs> that's what it felt like because it would come like a pulsing pain like every second and a half yeah. boom, boom. just uh, to remind you still here still here still here oh yeah. that's awful that's terrible well, that is a bad day and that leads to my next question who uh, who do you call on your bad day when you have a bad day John Latham. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, like he—he's uh, my boy, man. If I'm having a bad day, if I'm pissed at somebody, if I feel like somebody's shitting on me, or I'm just, just you know, I'm overwhelmed, and I just I feel like I can't catch up to everything I got to get done or whatever. I just call that dude, man. He's—he's he's yeah. always. He and I are always going to be best of friends, man. Yeah. He, he just always knows what to say. He knows me inside and out, so he knows you know, like how to calm me down or how to cheer me up. He's usually, usually my first call, man. Yeah. He's, he's, he's pretty fucking special dude to me. He's great, man. I'm so happy for him and all his success. He's, uh, uh when we were in LA, he was always such a good dude to me. So I, he's, uh, I say it on here every week about certain people, but there's guys I root for and he, uh, I definitely root for Sean. I, I couldn't be happier for him. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. Love that dude. Um, all right, I'll give you two more. We'll get you out of here. Uh, what's the best party you've ever been to? Uh, I threw the probably my favorite party of all time. <laughs> it was uh, my senior year of high school. I lived with my parents lived in Texas, and they let me go back to Indiana to finish my senior year because the high school I would have to go to in Texas was 5A. I think uh-huh. what they called it then. So it was where Matthew McConaughey went to school, Longview, Longview High School. And um, I would have missed him by a grade. Otherwise, I probably would have went there and we would have been best friends. Yeah. But <laughs> I, did, I, I did go because I was like, I worked my entire life to be the starting shortstop at yeah. Triton Central High School. I'm not going to get to start out in any position on that team. Yeah. You know? These guys are all going to play Division One ball. I'm like going to play junior college ball. So um, I went back home, thankfully, and I lived with 
uh, a dude who was like 23 at the time, 24. Real responsible dude, though. Didn't drink yeah. any of that shit. His dad had gotten moved for his job, and he basically had the whole house um, to be in charge of. And it's a big, giant house. And me and another of one of my best friends from high school, whose parents were going through a divorce, lived there together. And those two way more responsible than I was. Uh, the other dude that lived there that was in my grade was our, our star quarterback that later went to Princeton. He was like our um, didn't drink, you know, just great athlete, straight nailed dude, no trouble. I was the opposite. Like I was always <laughs> fucking up. So they're both out of town and for something for the week. And I'm like, hmm, good time. So party. So it's cool. I'm like, Hey, uh, guys, um, let's, get this party together and start spreading the word, you know, cause you get the girls over all this yeah. stuff. <laughs> Next thing I know, like everybody in the, in the County gets alerted. People from other schools are showing up. It's like that movie, you know, the part of the South I can't remember which one, but it, it just kept growing. So I have like end up probably 500 people and it's out <laughs> in the country. The house in the yard can hold it. No problem. Yeah, and it, it just keeps growing. We had fire going, we had uh, girls boxing each other. Like, <laughs> like we were spraying them with water hoses and they were in the mud boxing each other. Cause they had this boxing gear, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> so they had, they wore head gear and real boxing gloves. They were beating the shit out of each other. Uh, it was, it was awesome. Awesome. I think we went through five kegs Damn. there. That night, I mean, it was just lit. I got in so much trouble. <laughs> my buddy found out about it. One of the neighbors called in, of course. Oh, how I thought that wasn't going to happen. But <laughs> it was a good night, man. That's a great awesome. Night. I, there, a guy came from another party, another school, uh, one of our rival schools, and, like, pulled a knife out at some point. And one of my the guys on the wrestling team with me does a spinning back kick and kicks the knife out of this dude's hand like a movie. <laughs> it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then people pulled that guy out of there and they left. And I was like, Sean, that, like, I didn't even know you knew karate. He's like, I don't know karate, bro. It just <laughs> felt right. Like, he, it was the craziest shit I've ever seen. I'm like, this is the best party ever. That's awesome. <laughs> you no, know, like, when you're in the country. Just dumb shit like that happens. Yeah, of course. All the time. I love somebody it. has to pull a knife and threaten somebody or it's not a real party. That's right. You know? It sounds just like Wyoming, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. Well, all right, I got one more question for you, but before that, plug all your stuff where they, where they can find you. Uh, you know, if you go to the easiest place, go to toddcomedy.com, my website, man. I, I got a podcast page that sends you to each of my podcasts, the true crime one, the documentary one, and the comedy one. And uh, my tour schedule and shit's on there too, so yeah, Hopefully I'll be somewhere near all of you. Yeah, so go go Take support care. the podcast. Go buy a ticket when he's close, and uh, and uh, hopefully you'll get out here to Denver soon, and I'll see you. Yeah, I hope so, man. Well, uh, I'll leave you with this last question here, and thank you so much for doing it. I I, I hope this made the drive a lot better. It's been a lot of fun talking to you, but uh, it has. Thanks for having. People don't ask me to go on podcast. So I'm Dude, I, fucking appreciative of you, brother. You know, a lot of your fans ask, like, hey, can you get Todd? Can you get Todd? And then shout out to Tom Gordon. He reached out, and I was like, he's like, you want to oh. have Todd? I was like, yeah, for sure. So, well, Tom Gordon's the, the man. Trust me, with the stories and, you got, you'll be getting on much uh, a lot more <laughs> podcasts. You you can tell stories forever. Um, and dude, when you come to Indianapolis, please, 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 yeah, for sure, come on Fun Town and hang out with us. Oh, I would love to. Right. I, I will make that yeah, happen yeah, yeah. for sure. So, all right, here we go. Last okay. question. Thanks again for doing it. Uh, if you could yeah. script your last words before you die, what would they be? It was worth it. Trying to expand globally Long curly hair and a beard But he ain't Toby Keith 
You might have thought it's beef, but we gon' handle that. Stealing jerseys off of the wall like fuck Vander Jack. Okay, he ran with that, and now he's on the loose. Put a little bit of poison in his jamba juice. Go ahead and drink on that, just take another sip. Need an appraisal? Shout out to Ron Huff and Dick. The kids loving this. I know you heard it, son. The purpose is perfect. Every person we learn something from. Go ahead and come along. We have a little fun. A few questions. How about 31?